Hello, my dears, Daniela here, and welcome to another episode of the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. This episode is brought to you by Addo Aesthetics, the number one coaching company for aesthetic professionals wanting to step into the role of spa CEO. And today you are going to be inspired by one very incredible spa CEO. Her name is Debbie Brewer, and she is the founder of Beauty Brew. So as you'll hear in this episode, Debbie started her business a little bit later in life. She was a stay-at-home mom for more than 20 years, and she raised three great women, and then she chose to follow her passion for aesthetics after her girls were grown. Now, Debbie started with us as a Sales Factor student, and then she joined Growth Factor as a part of our partnership with Derma Concepts, who are the distributors of Environ Skin Care here in the U.S., Derma Concepts has a family first culture and they are the definition of support when you're looking at how a skincare company can support a spa. Derma Concepts also believes deeply in the power of education and setting their accounts up for success, which is why they offer all of their accounts who carry Environ thousands of dollars in wholesale credit when they sign up with us in Growth Factor. Now, we have this special track that we refer to in our growth factor program as the environ track. That again is for derma concepts accounts here in the U S carrying environ skincare. So we coach them and we provide specific resources on how to take that wholesale credit and 10 X it. So listen into this episode and you can hear just how quickly Debbie went from $0 to 180,000 in revenue while on this track. It's a lot faster than you think. And if you want to learn more about Derma Concepts, Environ Skincare, and Growth Factor, I want to encourage you to book a call with our team. You can find our call link on our website. You can email hello at Auto Aesthetics, or you can simply send us a DM and we will get you scheduled. All right, listen in, enjoy Debbie. She is absolutely phenomenal. I have so much respect for this woman. I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I do. All right, Debbie, welcome to the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. I'm so, so excited to share your incredible story with all of our listeners. Oh, I'm so, so excited to be here. Thank you. Okay, so in a nutshell, you were a stay-at-home mom. How many kids do you have? Three, three girls. Three girls. And how old are they now? Now they're 20, 25, and 26. Okay. So they were like right, right in a row and then had a little gap. Yeah. My first two were a year apart. Yeah. Okay. So you chose to be a stay at home mom, which is a beautiful and uh, a beautiful thing, much harder than running a company, I think (laughs) of going through, you know, the, um, the reality of being a present parent and a present mom and, um, you know, all of those types of things. There's also a lot of, um, I don't know if sacrifice is the right word because I think it's such a gift to be able to stay at home with your kids, but you are certainly putting your kids before yourself in a lot of situations. Yes, yes, yes. And when did you decide to open your practice? Well, my whole thing was I was a stay at home mom with the kids. Um, I got my thyroid removed because I was having overactive thyroid. And when I got my thyroid removed, I noticed that my skin started getting darker. So I almost got like the melasma mask. Uh huh. So, you know, being a stay-at-home mom with the kids, no really time for self-care. So, you know, my self-care was when the kids went to bed at night. So I just started noticing these things with my skin and, you know, I, I went to Sephora and I, I felt like, you know, I, I read the instructions on what I thought I needed and that didn't work. And then I went to a dermatologist and she gave me a peel, but didn't tell me, didn't ask me what I was doing at home and literally burnt my face because I didn't oh realize gosh. that I was on retinol when I was home. Mm. And then when I went to the doctor's office, I didn't know that you were not supposed to be on retinol before you go to derm or get appeal long story short so um my skin was darker than ever so then I started getting online and doing research and you know I found out a lot about you know what a dermatologist really is and they're like 
they're so deep into inside the skin and cancer. I mean, they do work on the outer layers, but they're just really, really focused on a deeper level of skin. Mm -hmm. So it made me realize that I need someone that cared more about the outside of the skin. And then I started realizing why are they so different? An esthetician and a derm. Anyway, so I found an esthetician that I really loved. She put me on a good regimen. Um, this was about 10 years ago. It worked out really great. I loved the feeling I had when I was with her. I loved when I did find time for her being a stay-at-home mom. I would meet her once a month. I loved that that time, that one hour I was with her, how I felt inside and out. Mm -hmm. I loved that that was my only hour and I embraced it like I looked so forward to it. I can't even explain it. To the it's point therapeutic. That, it's therapeutic. It made, yeah, it made my heart move different, you know? And mm -hmm. then I said, you know, when my kids uh, started getting a little more independent, I found that I wanted to make people feel like that. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, if I can make people feel like this, it would really make me happy because I know what they're feeling. Yeah. And then it just... It ju I just kept researching and researching. And then I went to aesthetic school, of course, and, and just fell deeper into the love of it all and what it took to be that esthetician, right? What I loved about school was they gave you the foundation, but there's so much more that you could do to make it your own personal thing. So you're then such a researcher too. Oh and my I've God. <laughs> and it just, so I dove in head first. I'm like, wow, not only can I do this, but I could be a different esthetician than anyone out there. Like, I just felt that I could bring so much of my empathy and so much of what I feel like when I go and get facials to someone else. Mm -hmm. So I loved it, did that. Then I went, never forget this, went to Vegas, got, uh, went to, me and my husband were there um, and I needed a bikini, but I didn't think I was going to swim. So I said to my husband, oh, I got to go. And we were at the Bellagio. I said, oh, I got to go pay $300 and get a bikini because I didn't think we were going to swim. So anyway, so I go up there, I make an appointment, get an appointment for a bikini. Little cute little lady about three foot five says to me, why do you have these marks on your bikini? And I was like, well, well what do you mean? I'm an esthetician. She said, I'm, why do you have to? And I told her, I, I don't know why I have marks on my bikini line. I said, maybe because... I have hyperpigmentation because of getting waxed and the ripping or whatever. And she goes, well, I don't understand. Sugaring doesn't do this. And I said, sugaring, what, what's that? And she goes, you know what? I'm going to do it for free. Don't tell anybody, but I'm going to sugar you for free because this is going to change your life. When I tell you it changed my life, I was literally in tears, not from the pain, from how I felt because I accomplished it, how painful it was. And I did it. And I looked like... <laughs> I, I did it and I felt like it looked beautiful. And I said, wow, that was so painful, but I did it. Like that was my choice. I did it. And it was the best thing I've ever done. Like it was like so good. Went home two days later after Vegas, went to Canada a week later and trained to sugar. My husband's like, wait, we just got back from Vegas. Where are you going? I said, I just signed up for this class in Canada. <laughs> went to Canada for five days and learned how to sugar. It took them two years to give me a certification because I kept calling him and calling him after I left, I came home, they wouldn't give me the certificate. They said, you have to practice. Then when you do it on video, we'll, we'll approve you. So it took me two years. I did a leg, like, nope, hands not right. <sighs> a month later, I did a leg again. Nope, hands not right. I'm literally crying so on the screen. Like this is teaching me so much. It's, it's, explaining so much more about you and your personality that like, I, I know I'm like, action taker, like driven perseverance. There's all these incredible qualities. You know how many people would give up but, to take but two you know years? What? When you struggle that hard to get it, you can't give it up. You know what I'm saying? So like I wanted it so bad and they wouldn't give it to me easily. And it made me earn it. It's the difference. When mm -hmm. you earn it, you own it. It's like, oh, you're not going to take this from me. When I finally got it, I was literally crying. Went back up to Canada two years later, hugged both the instructors that dragged me along for two years, which I, I probably should have thought the opposite for them. But they <laughs> made me, to me, the best sugarist. I feel like I am the best sugarist there is because I have so, so much. Tell me, tell me your practice now. You do obviously sugaring. Yes, I do sugaring and facials. 80% mm -hmm. um, is sugaring, but 
um, my affinity for facials is strong because, you know, later on, after I figured out my skin, I've been on Environ now for about five years since I got my license. I went on Environ and been studying with Environ and I've flown a couple places and saw Candace and went all in with Environ. And Environ really is the reason why I got rid of my melasma, 100 percent Environ, microneedling and peels. Mm -hmm. So when I meet someone and they say those special words, like oh, my skin's getting darker or I have melasma, I'm like, oh, it just, it makes me feel good inside. Cause I'm like, I can fix that. You know what I mean? But it's that ownership. And I let them know it's not going to happen overnight. You got to put the work in, you know, it, it you know, I kind of let them know that it's a journey and anything that's easy is not going to work, but it, it connects me to them. You know, like I immediately know what they feel. You know, and, and you're able to communicate that and let them feel that as well. Oh my God, it's so true. And like, I'll sugar them and they're like, oh, you know, um, I'm darker down here. Can we, yep. After six months of sugaring, we're going on a brightening plan. Or after six months of sugaring, we're going on a rejuvenating plan. Like, I just love that I'm so close to them in that situation of sugaring them. Like I do mostly Brazilians, but it's just a feeling that I know. And they even say, all my clients say, why do I feel like Wonder Woman when I walk out of here? Mm -hmm. You know, they always say that to me. And this energy I is contagious. Too. Oh my God. It's I feel it too. I'm like, you did it. I never forget. I had one lady, right? She came and she, I sugared her and she, she was like 20 in her twenties. She was like, she could only do one side. She was like, I can't do it. I can only do one side. I said, I grabbed her shoulders. I said, we're going to finish this and we're going to do it. And you're going to be so happy. She had one tear come down her face. She said, okay, Miss D. She calls me Miss D because it's been five years. She still comes to me. Okay, Miss D. Okay. She did it. She sat in my room. I was late for my next client crying and telling me, I'm so happy you didn't make me leave. I'm so happy you made me finish. I would have been so mad if I would have went home and had half a vagina done. <laughs> <laughs> and there's our Instagrammable quote. <laughs> But the feeling, she made my day. I felt like I made her do something that she didn't think she could do in 10 minutes. Like I changed this is her purpose driven. Day. This is purpose driven and impact driven for you. Yeah, it's so much. It's so much more. It's so much more. And it takes one client a day and my whole day is amazing. It's so hard. I could get one good client and I don't care what happens after that. I am like walking on the cloud. I think about them all night. I think about them, how happy they were when I was done. Or it's just, you know, learning to just, I do it for me. I do it for them. But at the end of the day, it's got to make me feel the connection to them. And I just need one a day. And I'll do 20 clients a day sometimes. It's crazy days. But that one client that I, that I have a good time with will drive the whole day. Like, it's just incredible. So tell, me, tell me what it was like for you when you made the decision. You know, you said when your your girls got a little bit older, you decided to go to aesthetic school. This was clearly a passion for yours. You made that decision. Sounds like your husband was super on board. And then um, when you first started your practice, what was that like? Were you scared? Were you, I mean, I know like there's so many women out there that have that feeling of it's too late for me. Or, you know, uh, whether you're a stay-at-home mom or it wasn't appropriate for you to go to beauty school uh, because your family wanted you to take a different path. It, how did how did you navigate through those emotions, those, um, I mean, you have an incredible mindset. Did you, how did you learn you, that? Uh, aesthetics is so hard. I'm going to tell you, you we, we literally work off of perfection. We're never expected to make mistakes. If we make mistakes, we got to act like we didn't. Like, it's just a very, very hard and it's grueling and it's lonely, right? Because sometimes you feel like you're the only one responsible for so many faces and so many changes that people want. And you, you just, you're, you got all these hats. And I feel like when I, I remember seeing your, your messages and feeling, I've, feel your empathy through, through Instagram. That's how I met you. And I just automatically didn't feel lonely. I felt like I really see, like when I'm with you guys and I hear you speak and you guys all talk, it just feels like everything's okay. You know, I grew up very poor. I remember when, um, 
I got married and my husband was like, I, I need you to stay home with the kids. Uh, do you think you could do that? I think I got this. I have everything. And I actually felt guilty for not contributing. You know, it was really oh, weird. But it's when such my husband a huge like, contribution. I mean, yes. if I could have a stay at home mom. hundred <laughs> percent. But he had to tell me that because I didn't have that growing up. You know, growing up, it was like, you know, I slept in the bed with my mom until I was 19 years old. You know, like, you know, if I wanted to go to college, I had to find a way to, you know, I, I got my degree, my, uh, my uh, college degree, but I had to, I had to find those scholarships. I had to research that stuff. It was just that guilt of someone saying, I got it. You just do this kind of was a little offsetting for me, but at the same time, that's kind of how I feel like I work with my practice. I feel like you guys are the support, you know, the, the adult family is unbelievable. They don't even know the, the depth that it feels, but then to know that you know, I can make mistakes. Like, it's so funny. I wrote in my 90 day book that you gave us. I'm having a problem meditating because I feel like I'm not worthy to sit in a corner and do nothing. <laughs> and that sounds crazy to me. It's I not only, doing nothing. It's it's, it's not. so weird. I feel like when I'm not doing for someone else, I almost feel guilty that I'm doing nothing. So how if about this reframe of when you make yourself a better human? When you do your own personal development, you have more to pour into your patients. So the better that you, the more that you pour into yourself, the more that you focus on your personal development, the more um, time and space that you give to yourself to allow yourself to be who you are, to release any uh, need for perfection and just show up who you are, which I see as just pure love, right? The mom, the nurturing, the, you have this love and then you also have like the mama bear, like. Yes, yes, yes. You know? So I, I don't, I don't know what, it's just, and then it's that, that feeling of success, that feeling of, wow, this was really hard and I did it, mm -hmm. you know? And feeling and, and, proud and that, of yourself. And that thought of things don't happen to me for me is a big statement. You know, mm -hmm. like I, you know, I had to resonate with that. Like, you know, that why is this happening to me is not what life's about. You know, it's like these things happen to make you better. You know, I, and I, I, don't I think know. that you're um, you don't have to share any numbers, um, but I know that you have a very successful business and you have grown in a, um, a pretty fast period of time. I mean, you're, but you know what? I have a story for that. You're going to love this. So okay. I wanted to join when I was working at another place and I was only making 20,000 because I was part-time at a day spot because I wanted to get faces. I needed to practice on faces and at, doing it at home wasn't enough. I didn't want to do my family because they're too nice. And they're like, oh, it's great. I really wanted to get with pe people that it was, it was undeniably good because they don't know me and I'm not, you know, they haven't yeah. done anything to them in the past. So I was making 20 grand. I remember it took a whole year for me to contact your, your group. And they were like, oh, Debbie, you just, you're, what's your revenue? And I said, my revenue is 20,000. Oh, you really got to be at six figures. I was like, what? So I'm thinking, oh my gosh. So here it is another no. So I said, oh no, no. Well, we're going to get the six figures. So then I got the 80 and I contacted again. And she said, well, you can do, um, what was the one I did? The Sales first factor. Time? Yes, you could do sales factor and then we'll see where you are. I'm like, oh, okay. So I did sales factor and I was like, well, and you came to the event. Yes. Uh, cried like everybody else. I cried at the event. I did the whole thing. <laughs> my then my I, husband says I make people cry for a living. Oh my That's God. Like I, I just met everybody. I was like, why am I crying? Like, I didn't even know why I was crying. And I, it's so funny. I hired Ryan and literally... And literally, I've been here in this location for six months. I'm at 175,000 in six months. Oh my and I gosh. I just can't even, and that's all revenue. I can't even believe it. I have one person that works for me on Wednesdays and that forces me to be off on Wednesday because if she wasn't here, I swear I would be here. So I had to, I begged her. She's a nurse, really good friend of mine. She's like, let me come in on Wednesdays and work the hydrofacial. You, she knew you need to get a day off because I'm all in because- you know, to stay with this group, I have to, I have to be making revenue. 
So I'm like, I, I, I gotta, I gotta make revenue and I gotta keep making, it has to make sense, you know? So it's just, it just never stops. It's like, then you had the uh, environment event. I was like, oh, well now I got to make more money. <laughs> and, <it> just, <laughs> and then when I signed on with Ryan, I was like, well, I guess I got to stay. Cause now I got to keep, it's just, it's, it's, I wake up, I look at my revenue every day and it's just, it makes me want to cry. It's just crazy. But you should be so, you did that. I, it's just, it's, you I, did that. I think it's really important. You chose to work with us and to work with Environ and to work with other people, but ultimately it's you that's taking those actions. We're just saying, hey, this might be a good idea or hey, that might be a good idea, mm -hmm. but you're doing it. And I think it's really important for spa CEOs to understand and celebrate like that is you, that is your accomplishment, your hard work, your dedication, your passion, you being the person taking action. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a something ride. to be really yeah. proud of. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so surreal, right? Cause it was only five years ago that I was at home. I was still stay. I was still home figuring things out. It was just five because it'll be five years. I've been an esthetician in February. So, so you're, you're essentially a solo, but you've got the gal one day a week. Exactly. And if and I have an event, she can, I, I, I let her get involved in the event. And so from the time you went from 20,000 to 80,000 <laughs> to 180. <laughs> yes. So from the, from the 20 to the 80, how long did that take you? Oh gosh, from the 20 to 80, probably took about nine months. And I was still at that um, location as a part-timer. And I asked, I remember I was only working 18 hours and I made 80,000. And she said, and I said to her, can I get another day? And she told me no. And I said, I, I don't think I want to work here anymore. I think I'm, I'm, I'm doing too much. You know what I mean? And then yeah. that's when I found you guys. And then the elite suites opened up and I said, I'm just going to get a suite and take it, start from zero. I just walked away. And, um, Ryan so went sure down to zero. Oh, zero. I so was, you went from oh, zero to 180. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. Exactly. I went nothing and just walked. I literally walked out. I gave her one week notice. Ryan just said, go on Google. Zero make to 180,000 in six months. It's crazy. I, I, I don't even, it doesn't even make any sense. Do you understand what a. No, a, I don't. <laughs> that's like, that is like, oh my gosh, that is incredible. No, I know. Incredible. I know. And I want to shout out to the buildings to the world, but I can't because this, I, you know, you just want to keep it contained, but it's like, <laughs> you know, I, I never forget my husband. I had my first event and, and this was, I wasn't with you guys yet. I had an environment event. I opened up February 20th and I had an environment event March 15th. Like who does that? Who does an event two weeks after they open? Um, and my husband uh, was like helping me move stuff around and Byron. I mean, not the Byron, the hydrofacial. I had a hydrofacial event. Sorry. Hydrofacial lady came in and um, my husband left and came back uh, uh, six hours later. And I was like, oh my God, guess how much I made my first event. And my husband says, mm, how many people were here? I said about 50. He said, uh, 4,000. I said, I made 28,000. He said, what? <laughs> He took me so seriously after that. When I talk my business now, I see him. He'll get off his computer and look at me. What's going on with the business? Because he is like such shock. He was like, wait, what? He's like, he maybe you should have been the one working. <laughs> he told me, you know, he teases me now. He said, I'm his retirement ticket. He said he makes sure I'm healthy. He'll bring me coffee in bed sometimes. Oh, you my ticket out of, out of work. I'm going to. Oh, that is so funny. It's really funny. Yeah, he's a, he sees he's something. So then yeah. what's what's next for you? What do you consider as your next milestone? Um, I would, I mean, I'm going to just put it out there because I learned this from you and you talk about the millions that you want to make. I want, I would love to have my own spa with like six rooms and I want to get a business good enough to sell. And I want to get other sugar people in there that want to sugar. I just want to, I want people to sugar. I want people to do facials. And I want people to think about that feeling they get when they walk into my place. 
You know, I just want to go out. I don't want to just disappear as if, you know, a, a, another generation is coming. I really want people to know that person started sugaring in this area and they're still sugaring. You know, like I'm going to drive by and building and it says, I, you know, I left that building and there's still sugaring in there. And so it is. And so it is. Let's give a quick shout out to Environ because I think they're um, such an incredible partner and they've been, um, you know, a lot of that success, we have to credit to them and their incredible partnership that they have with our Growth Factor people where they actually give the 3000 in wholesale credit yeah. um, to, which is tremendous, right? Because that's something that, um, so for our, uh, just for everybody listening that's not familiar, we have a partnership with Derma Concepts. They're the U.S. distributors of Environ, which is a phenomenal line. If you have not um, yes. heard it or checked, you know, like I, I'm 42. I've been using Environ and PDO and the PDO Afterglow. Yes. And I, in the past like month, have gotten so many, it's, I'm on month three of Environ. So I'm just getting ready to go to level two. And I know that the, the magic keeps happening as you step up, but I've been getting so many compliments on my skin. Um, but more than just being a good product line, they are somebody they're They're a business that supports yes. their accounts. In they such support a the esthetician. Yes. They support the estheticians a hundred percent. Like, it's just so nice to know if I buy 10, like just the little things that they do. I just, I love it. A phone call away that, you know, they operate large, but they're so small. You know, and when you call That's them. That's what it feels you know like. I mean? Yeah. It's a like small business them, who cares yeah, about people. They know who I am. It Like, I'm like, this didn't work. This, And they're like, okay, well, let's fix it. No questions. You know, I just feel like I'm their only client <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that is wonderful. So any other piece of advice or anything you want to share for the esthetician that's out there that is maybe thinking that she's too late to go on her own, that is thinking that maybe she's not worth it or able, any of those feelings that creep into our heads, which you have obviously smashed in you know, I'm sure you still have those thoughts. We all have those thoughts, but yeah, like you're yeah. proving to yourself every day what taking action looks like and can be. I just feel like time really, you know, time flies. You know, I feel like just like I was like, oh, I got so much to do. I have so I, I look back and think that once you just put one foot in front of the other and just start, just do it. What's just the next start. Best Mm -hmm. It just happens. It's going to happen. You just have to start. And that was my big thing. I try not to focus so much. I don't have time. What I'm finding is that just starting makes makes it go. It just it just everything falls into place. But starting is the hardest thing. Mm -hmm. But once I like, you know, even when I got the 90 day book, I just kept looking at it. I read those like, oh, I got to fill it out. But once I started filling it out, I kept going back to it. It just everything just flows after the start. You yeah. know, and that's why I tell people it's the hesitating, it's the questioning, and it makes you not start. But if you just start, you don't even realize you've overcome everything already. It's yeah, just and it's hard to like, you can map out the entire, you know, we're in our 2024 planning right now. I can map out every single thing, but I talk about leaving space for the magic because yeah. there are opportunities that are going to come up. There are um, things that are not going to go according to plan. And you've got to, you've got to plan those things out. You've got to be prepared in a sense to um, operate a seven figure company, like you're wanting to build for yourself. Um, but you have to have that space for the magic. And you're not going to know what those things are that you need until you put that foot right in front of the other and do that next, that next right step. I mean, that's the hardest part for me. Is has been to start. Once I've started, it it seems to be a little more easier and natural. Like the, there's no excuse because you're in it, you know. And that's the best advice I can give. Just start it and and not overthink it, you know. Because I, you're going to overthink it anyway, you know. 
I don't know. I, I'm at to say just doing it because that was my biggest thing. Once, like I said, once I opened up the 90 day book, I did it. You know, once I said I wanted to, you know, work, work with uh, Environ, I just started it and I did it. And it was hard with Environ because initially they wanted um, a $2,000 order. You know, the doctor's uh, note was not a problem. I have a doctor, but like when they said they wanted 2000, I had, and I just bought a $50,000 hydration machine. It kind of threw me off a little bit, but I just did it. I just did it. Like, I was like, it, it's going to happen. It's going to work out. You know, I feel like, um, when you, when everything I didn't start, I can't even say how it went. Cause I never did it. I just said, you know what I mean? It's like, it, yeah. So I don't know. So just That's start. my best advice is just start. Don't second guess. Um, trust in yourself too. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent, a hundred percent and get support, get the support you need. Like, you know, my husband gave me really great advice one time. He told me you need two mentors. You need a mentor. You tell good stuff to, and you need a mentor. You tell everything to, because you really got to know when you're going to need the base of one or the other, you know, Mm -hmm. because you can't have one mentor and tell them all the good and all the bad, because then they assessing too much, you Mm -hmm. know, but if you get that one mentor that only hears your good accomplishments you call them and they're only gonna blow you up even more you know what i mean you need both you know and i feel like i do have both you know i have a mentor that only hears good stuff and i have one that hears like oh my god what what uh, what have i done you know and then she's like (laughs) oh boy what are we gonna do you know but it's just different (laughs) you get the different energies from both you know so important yeah so important yeah. yeah well debbie you are such an inspiration. Um, thank you so much for being open to share your story. I, I really, over the years, I've talked with so many women, so many estheticians, and it's such a common thread of, I feel like I'm behind. I feel like it's too late. And I really, you're not. It's mm-hmm. never too late. There's so many incredible businesses that have been started. Do you mind sharing how old you are? No, I'm 55. And when did you start? I started... I I graduated at 50. Yes. Yeah. So take this as your inspiration. If you've been waiting, if you've been wondering if it's too late, if you've been wondering what's possible for you, just start. That's it. All right, my dear. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for sharing your energy with us. And uh, we'll catch you guys all in the next episode. 